number nine. This is a movie that um, I saw it 20, you know, 20, 25 years ago when it, when it first came out, 19, 1993, which I guess technically is 30 years ago. Gosh, I'm old. Uh, <laughs> this is a this is The Sandlot. This is mostly a bunch of unknown kid actors, uh, except Patrick Renna has the line of the film. You're killing me, Smalls! We're talking, of course, about 1993's The Sandlot. I just rewatched this last night. This is the second film on my list that has uh, that has James Earl Jones. And, of course, James Earl Jones, one of the classic all-time baseball movie appearances. This one not as classic, but anytime you can have James Earl Jones and that baritone voice appearing in a baseball movie, James Earl Jones is one of the classic American treasures. But this also is, um, oddly, if you look at the Wikipedia page for The Sandlot, even though the film takes place in 1962, and the movie takes play, is, comes out in 1993, there is an actual baseball connection to an actual baseball player, but one who was in the major leagues from 1997 to 2003 named Benny Agbayani, who in the film is called Benjamin Franklin Rodriguez, I believe. Mm-hmm. So he's Benny and Benny. I don't know how they would do uh, tell the have a feature film about a guy who wouldn't make the majors until five or six years after the film comes out. Uh, But that's also an interesting little factoid about this film. Um, Classic American tale of growing up, being the new kid on the block, dealing with uh, a stepfather, all of the nervousness issues kind of feels similar to a Christmas story in many ways. Um, You get that, that voice, that voiceover narration and just the innocence of childhood and, wanting to play ball with your friends. For all those reasons, The Sandlot is number nine on my list. Yeah. What are your yeah. thoughts on The Sandlot? I, I lived it. I, that, 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 I, a matter of fact, when they shot that film in L.A., it's a great scene in that movie. You remember, my favorite character was Quince, the kid with the glasses, and he fakes drowning in that pool. I swam in that pool. That's at the Pan Pacific Pool in L.A. He, he, he fakes drowning, and the beautiful lifeguard, Wendy Peppercorn, Gives gives him mouth to mouth and he steals a kiss and that look when he looks at that fence and she kind of pulls her glasses off and winks at him and he gets all excited. That's the that was the innocence of the youth and of course you talked about you know it's a kid that is trying to warm up to his stepdad played by Dennis Leary, Karen Allen, famous actress played the mom. What a what a heartwarming film about a bunch of kids that love baseball growing up in California like I did. The weather's always great. July fourth, and the and the, the 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 fireworks are going on, and they're and they're using the fireworks to go play baseball, and light up the sky, shot wonderfully. That's what I that's what I took from the film. Yeah, and and just the the point of view of being told, sort of like the Christmas story, where the filmmaking is purposely imperfect, where they're they're evoking the the memory of youth. So when they have when they have the beast or the monster from next door stealing all these balls they're they're very clearly some you know some grip with a big uh hand thing coming across the screen but that's how you remember things when you're eight nine ten years old so it it actually kind of adds to the charm of the storytelling and the the purposeness of the filmmaking i think as well too so yeah i i love the sandlot it is um is it's one that i hadn't watched uh for a while so i that's why i watched it last night and it's a lot fresher in my mind than a lot of films on this list but uh, yeah, the Sandlot is uh, an all-time classic, and just it's a ton of fun, and it's it's a truly innocent film where there are no bad people, and you can just put it on, watch it. It's safe for kids. It's family friendly. It is uh, it is great Americana, great filmmaking across the board. Your number seven is the Sandlot, and and I'll and I'll just I'll just put a, a, a addendum to what I said is that you watch that it took place in '62. Well, I was two years old, but I, I I was a kid. I was eight years old, 1968, and that's what you did. There's no phones back then. You, you, I, Brian, you're a young guy, so you grew up with the phone generation. You went out and you played ball. And my favorite, one of my other favorite scenes in the movie is the street kids, and they're playing against the 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 rich kids that have uniforms. And I'm not gonna say how it went, but these kids knew how to play ball. So it, it touched my heart because I grew up. And when, and then when you see things that you you know you, they they filmed it in areas you grew up. It touches more of your heart. Well, and you were a pretty good prep baseball player yourself, weren't you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I could play. 
Yeah, I got, I got my look at it. I got my baseball. I've had this shirt for years, you know, and this is what you wear. I I, I love this sport. I want to get into it, but the sport back then, I, I'm big at saying p- the purity of it. You know, you and I go back. I, I, I kind of agree with you. I like the old rules, but I'm hoping the game gets back to the days of the Sandlot, Natural, and Bull Durham, and maybe it will. Who knows? Well, and, and that's the beauty of baseball. It, it keeps evolving. It's, you know, baseball is more of a, a worldwide game now. It's not just the kids playing stickball in Brooklyn and uh, Boston. It's it's truly a global game, and that's part of the appeal, but it's also part of the challenge, too, because uh, keeping kids involved in the United States and and, um, and uh, being able to enjoy the sport that has, in many ways, become so successful that it's it's harder for kids to be able to afford to go to a game now or even watch on cable TV. If you don't have the money for cable TV, how do you watch your favorite baseball team on TV or even go to a game because everything is so... (laughs) Baseball has become so successful, it is so expensive that, you know, how do you you protect the love of baseball for the next generation when it's priced out so many different people? So, yes, baseball has so many different issues in it. Um... But it, you know, but it also if if you if you all ultimately boil it down to the purity of the love of baseball, um, the, the sport even through strikes, baseball is able to fix the avarice and fix the greed um, and bring it back to baseball, which you know it's it's one of those perfectly designed sports that as badly as business people try and screw it up, baseball can fix itself. At least it has through 150 years. <laughs> 